This video is going to go over activity C of the gizmo for Kepler's laws of planetary motion. I want to show you some things you haven't done yet in this simulation and try to keep it short. Remember to read all of the directions, especially this box here. It says get the gizmo ready by clicking reset. Reset right there. And then set the sun's mass to medium, something we haven't done yet. It's up here. Set the sun mass from small to medium. And that says it's going to be more like the size of our sun. Now this is for Kepler's last law, the third law, planetary motion. It relates the period to the orbital radius. The period is how long it takes for a planet to complete one orbit. And the radius is the average distance from the sun. <clears throat> so the first question is a predict. There's no wrong answers. Just answer what you think the answer is, but think about it. Don't just put anything down. And now it wants us to put the planet at negative 4i. You know how to do this now. Should say negative 4i here. My planet happens to already be there. But if you move it, notice how this red area is changing. Get it to negative 4i perfectly, not above, not below. And it tells us to move the velocity vector to negative 15. Remember, you drag the arrow. And when you drag the arrow, you'll see that the velocity vector, v, velocity in purple to match the color of the arrow, that will change. And let's move it until you get perfectly up to 15. Notice if you move it this way, you'll get an i and a j value. You want to keep it right here, straight down to negative 15. Then it wants you to do one uh, complete orbit. And then once it completes one orbit, hit pause, and it's going to ask you some questions about that. Notice, however, that the time for that orbit is right down here. It tells you how long it took, how many days. And since we're talking about period and radius, it's important for you to see where the data is. So it tells you, asks you, what's the approximate period of a planet in days? That's down here. Then it tells you to select table. Table is right up here. And when you select that, it'll give you some data here. Right? You can record data. And it'll tell us about how many days, right? it also tell us the T in years and the orbital radius, the AU. So here it's going to ask you for those things, days, years, orbital radius, all of those things are right here. Then the gizmo asks you to move the planet to negative 2i and 20j and redo it. You can do that. You know how to move the planet. Then it wants you to gather some data. This is for you. Everyone's answer should be different. So it says, experiment with the gizmo to create a series of larger and larger orbits. Record each orbit's radius and period. So if you zoom out on the graph right here, when you hit the minus and plus signs, that'll zoom in and out. You can make larger and larger See, we're making the graphs bigger. So you can actually drag the planet anywhere you want, switch the velocity, hit play, See what happens to that orbit. Right? Oh, something bad happened. Notice if you move the planet too far away, sometimes the gravity is not strong enough on the sun, and the planet will just fly through space. So if this happens, just reset and change a little bit. Change the velocity until you get a nice orbit. Oops. Sometimes it takes a little bit for it to play out. I'm losing this one to space too. So be careful. Zoom in a little bit. Let's try this. There we go. I'll give you a tip. If you turn on show foci, if you don't have any foci available, if they're too far apart, then there will be no orbit. All right? That's a little trick. As always, read the directions, but when you get to number six, call me over and I will give you a check for this. You're not gonna take a picture, you're just gonna call me over. That means that you actually have to do everything that this gizmo says, because if you get the number six and call me over and it doesn't look correct, then I will know. <clears throat> All right. If you need help, just ask.